Hey there guys, this is Paul from the Quad Bros. Kyle's behind the camera and today we're going to be building the 250 size Nozzle Light Quad from CheapDrones.com. This is a build view. Okay guys, so today to get us started off with this build, we're going to show you what this thing has in store for us. We've got a power distribution board, propellers, uh, the DJI Nozzle, we have uh, four Emax 1806 motors, four Emax ESCs, the frame, and next up is the various parts and screws that are there in order to put the frame together. Okay, so the first thing I like to do when I'm building a quadcopter or any other multi-rotor is to start with the power distribution board. And the first thing we're gonna start off with today is we're gonna solder the power distribution board to a male XT60 connector to get our power from our LiPo. So after you've stripped your protective casing off your wire, the next step is to solder to your XT60. I like to use some flux to make the connections easier when I'm soldering. The next step after you've soldered to your XT60 is to solder onto the power distribution board. Now if you're going to use flux on this step, make sure to use it very conservatively because if it spills or if it gets on one of the connections that you don't want it to get on, you could have a short on your board. The next thing I like to do when I'm building a multi-rotor is to get everything out of the bag and lay it out before I start putting anything together or making any connections. I like to see everything the way it is laid on a table so it's easier for me in the end to determine how it's going to come together. Once you have everything laid out on the table, take the biggest piece and then put the third biggest piece underneath it and the second biggest piece on top of it and then put all the arms in between these pieces and that's the way your quad's going to be laid out. Now that you have your frame laid out on the table, your next step is to get all the motors and the ESCs and line them up the way that they're supposed to be for the frame layout. You're going to want to take the counterclockwise motors and put them across from each other diagonally and you want to put the clockwise motors across from each other diagonally. If you're unsure of which motors are clockwise and which motors are counterclockwise, then take the box that they came from, flip it over and it'll tell you on the back which kind of motor they are. So your next step after you're satisfied with the layout of your quad is to solder all four ESCs to the power distribution board. Now if you're going to use flux, make sure to use it conservatively like I said before when soldering the connection to the board. After I've applied flux to all the connectors on the ESCs, I like to tin the tips of the wires, which means I put solder on each of the tips of the wires and then I put solder on each of the connections on the board that I'm going to make. I do this so that they stick easier and that the connections are stronger in the end. After I've made all the connections to the power distribution board, the next step is to set the power distribution board aside pull out the arms and to screw the motors into each of the arms. Make sure to use the second longest screws when you're screwing the motor into the arm because if you use the longest ones, it'll screw too far into the threads of the motor and your motor will be unusable. Okay, now that you've got all of your motors screwed into your arms, your next step is to dump out all of the bullet connectors that are in with the XT60s in a bag. What you're going to want to do with the bullet connectors is put one bullet connector for each wire coming out of the ESC and each wire coming out of each of the four motors. Flux is very useful for this because of how small the little bullet connectors are. Unlike the power distribution board and the ESCs, you don't have to worry about using the flux conservatively in this case. It helps a lot if you use a lot of flux and it makes the soldering a lot easier. After you've put all of your bullet connectors on, your next step is to get your power distribution board and to screw it on to the main plate of your frame. In order to do this, you will need the four small plastic screws and the four small plastic nuts in order to secure it to the frame. Your next step after connecting the power distribution board to the main frame is to connect the arms to the main frame by using the bottom plate and the spacers and the long screws to connect the arms to the bottom and top plates of the frame. First, I would put the screws through the main frame 
and the arms and then put the spacers on before I would put the bottom plate on and then eventually the nuts on top of that. So the next step after you've screwed all the spacers and the screws in is to take the ESCs and connect them to the bullet connectors on the motors. After you've done this, you're going to want to either heat shrink all your connections or use electrical tape to make the connection secure. If you've never built a multi-rotor before, you might want to leave the connections with just a small piece of tape on them to keep them from shorting out so that you can check your motors and make sure that they all work before you heat shrink or electrical tape your connections. After everything has been heat shrinked or electrical taped, you're going to want to secure your ESCs to your arm frames. You can either use zip ties or twisty ties or heat shrink to do this. However you do it, that's your next step. After securing all the ESCs to the frame, your next step is to screw the bottom plate onto the main frame and to secure it with the nuts to the main frame. The next step is to flip your frame over and attach the DJI nozzle to your frame with the adhesive tape that comes in the package. Make sure that the front arrow on the nozzle is facing the front of your quad. Now you're on the home stretch, the next step is to plug all of the wires into the nozzle according to the wiring diagram that will be on the screen. After the nozzle is wired correctly, make sure to run all the motors and make sure that they run the correct way in order for your quad to fly. If you need help with the NASA software, there are plenty of videos and there will be one in the link with the description below to help you. After you have the top plate on, the next step will be to put the NASA LED wherever it will be best visible for you when you're flying in the sky. The next step is to take the aluminum spacers and screw the top plate into the main frame with the spacers in between. Finally, take the last aluminum spacers and screw them on to the bottom of the frame to use as your landing gear. Then you're ready to fly. Initially, if you have problems with the quad not flying correctly, make sure that you have your PIDs tuned correctly. We will have our suggested PIDs in the description below after we have more of a time to fly this quad. Thanks for watching, we're going to leave you with this.